Now it's time for Lefties Losing It. Let's start Lefties with a little frivolity before we get into the serious stuff, the vile, reckless rhetoric of the increasingly radical left that has incited yet another assassination attempt against President Trump. And I regret to inform you that the real Kamala is back and I have the videos to prove it. But let's start with this lefty dude losing it and threatening a young man who he says insulted him. Was there a misgendering? Get the f out of my face now! Ooh, that was, now! That was very rude of you. Get the f out of my face! Do you want to go to jail? Sir, ma'am, I don't really know what to call you. You're f done, man. No I'm Let done. Me get the f police, you just insulted me. Ooh, that escalated quickly and the anger levels did not diminish with this lefty losing it. Here comes the threats. And I could f***ing tell the police to get you... I'm vegan, so don't say that. Listen. You told me he, man. You really get the f*** out of my way right now. Okay, yeah, yeah, we'll do that. You do not have a release. I will sue you. You're going to sue him? Don't sue him, man, because we're trying to just... I don't have a... You do not have a release. If you f***ing post this, I will destroy you. I will destroy you destroy you? Jeez, that seems unnecessary, but there is a happy ending to this interaction. Watch as the lefty losing it considers taking off his shirt for a punch-on before reconsidering, and then the surprise ending. I will destroy you. Keep going on. I got my crew with me now. I got my crew. Yeah! Yeah! What's up? Woo! Who won? Who's next? Oh, kids these days. And talking about kids, look at how this little tyke goes from happy to horrified when he spots a furry. Can't blame him. Look, I'm sure after many years of indoctrination in the public school system, that kid will learn to recognise that furries and the ever-expanding 2SL, LGBTQIA++ community are all stunning and brave, always. And he better learn that there are more than two genders. How many genders are there? Um, I feel like there's two, because, like, trans. No, Tars, stop. Don't say that on camera. Yeah, but I feel like you no. either switch from a boy to a girl. No, stop, 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 switch stop, back stop. and forth. Stop, stop, stop. I feel like I it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Whatever you want to be, it's fine. It's okay. Yeah, but I feel like they switch back and forth. Like, I know. I'm so, yeah, but, like, it doesn't really matter. Like, there's, like, you can be anything you want to be. It doesn't matter. Come on, yeah. stop, stop. I'm, all right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There was a North Korean vibes there. The fear of saying something offensive to trans activists or to leftists in general, the fear of being cancelled. The Chinese Communist Party has a social credit system to keep its citizens in check and it looks like something similar exists in the West. The self-censorship and, and fear there was real. Now to the ladies of The View, and here Joy Behar indulges in more crazy, reckless rhetoric, claiming that Donald Trump is such a threat that every artist must back Kamala to save the republic. In this emergency that we're in, I think that the Who's artists should come out and speak for Kamala against Donald Trump, because he is an existential threat to the country. What do you say to that? They speak like this even after an attempt on Trump's life two months ago that left a man dead and Trump escaped death by millimetres. And talking about reckless rhetoric, here is Democrat rep Jasmine Crockett saying MAGA is a domestic threat just a few hours before another attempt on Donald Trump's life. I talk about the fact that when we swore in finally in January, that we swore to defend against those that are coming against us, whether they are domestic or international. And right now, I feel like MAGA in general, they are threats to us domestically. And we see it time and time again. But don't worry, it's not like the media will hold any of these people accountable. Kamara Harris wasn't even asked about her and the Democrats' inflammatory rhetoric in the lead-up to the assassination attempt during that debate. Uh, here's just a small sample of prominent Democrats, actors, singers, politicians, news anchors, inciting violence against Trump and Republicans in general. 
I thought he should have punched him in the face. I said, even if you lost, he insulted your wife. Yes. He came down the escalator and called Mexicans rapists and murders. He said, well, what do you think I should have done? I said, I think you should have punched him in the face and then gotten out of the race. You would have been a hero. I'd like to punch him in the face. I said, if we were in high school, I'd take you behind the gym and beat the hell out of him. Punch some people in the face. When was the last time an actor assassinated a president? They're still going to have to go out and put a bullet in Donald Trump, and that's a fact. Look as his character is stabbed to death. Where is John Wilkes Booth when you need him? I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. A Missouri state senator is under investigation by the Secret Service after saying she hopes President Trump is assassinated. I will go and take Trump out tonight. And if you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome anymore, anywhere. And the lies and incitement has never stopped, no, not even after that first assassination attempt, not even after today's developments. Indeed, MSNBC decided that it is Trump and his camp who need to tone down the violent rhetoric. We do not know, again, the source of any gunshot or gunshots. We don't know who's responsible for this. Uh, the whole thing has yet to be 100 percent confirmed uh, from start to finish how this all played out. But do you expect to hear anything from the Trump campaign about toning down the rhetoric, toning down the violence, or would that be atypical of uh, the former president? Unbelievable. I've said it before and I'll say it again. You don't hate the leftist media enough. You think you do, but you don't. And here is Lester Holt on NBC blaming Trump, not the crazy leftist trying to kill him. Today's apparent assassination attempt comes amid increasingly fierce rhetoric on the campaign trail itself. Mr. Trump, his running mate J.D. Vance, continue to make baseless claims about Haitian immigrants in Ohio. Disgraceful, deplorable, but predictable. And talking about baseless lies, here is Kamala at the so called debate, which was really a three versus one setup. Remember her repeating that dangerous Charlottesville lie? Let's remember Charlottesville, where there was a mob of people carrying tiki torches, spewing anti Semitic hate. And what did the president then at the time say there were fine people on each side. That ugly, dangerous, divisive lie has been debunked again and again, even by left-wing sites like uh, Snopes. I first debunked it seven years ago. But here's the proof one more time. This is what Trump actually said about the white supremacists. And you had people, and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists, because they should be condemned totally. But you had many people in that group other than neo-Nazis and white nationalists, OK? Could it be any clearer? And it's all on video, and yet they persist with this lie. And, of course, the ABC moderators refuse to fact-check that verifiable lie. They knew it was a lie when she said it. And while we're on the Veep, the real Kamala is back the weirdly laughing incoherent vice president with the uh, multiple accents here's another one hello to all my divine nine brothers and sisters <laughs> and my soror <laughs> and to all my hbcu brothers and sisters <laughs> And Kamala did another interview. It did not go well. She was incoherent, obtuse, and made zero effort to answer the questions asked. When we talk about bringing down prices and making life more affordable for people, what are one or two specific things you have in mind for that? Well, I'll start with this. Um, I grew up a middle-class kid. My mother raised my sister and me. She worked very hard. Um, she was able to finally save up enough money to buy our first house when I was a teenager. Um, I grew up in a community of hardworking people, you know, construction workers and nurses and teachers. 
what do well-kept lords have to do with the question asked? And yes, I noticed the start of the answer was almost word for word what she said during the debate when she failed to answer the same question. And we're only halfway through her incoherent response. And, um, and I was raised to believe and to know that all people deserve dignity. And that we as Americans have a beautiful character. You know, we have ambitions and aspirations and dreams. Word salad Kamala is back. It's no wonder that after the debate, when Kamala and the president visited New York for 9-11 commemorations, it was Trump that got the biggest cheers. And the same thing happened in Pennsylvania. Have a look at this remarkable footage from Shanksville in the Keystone State. The reaction when Biden and Harris enter compared to when Trump enters a few moments later. <laughs> No wonder President Biden was donning a Trump hat. And no, this image isn't AI. It's a real image. Here's how it happened. Come on. I ain't going that far. Yeah. Better do a selfie. There he goes.